Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of spirit and smundi troubles my sight somewhere in sands of the desert. The mind blowing images in the first stanza of the poem suggest disintegration, disorder, destruction, devastation. It is clear to the poet that some revelation is at hand. If so much turbulence, if so much turmoil is taking place, it must be that some revelation is at hand, some revelation is about to take place. Revelation is the unveiling of things not previously known and of things that cannot otherwise be known. What is obtained from a revelation has not been obtained earlier and cannot be obtained except through the revelation. It is possible to see the second coming of WB AIDS as part of the great apocalyptic tradition of the Judeo-Christian world. The Greek word apocalypse means revelation. The roots of the apocalyptic tradition can be traced back to the Bible and is exemplified by the book of Daniel. In fact, the apocalyptic nature of the book of Daniel can be profitably compared and contrasted with the apocalyptic nature of the second coming. Apocalypse is divine disclosure. Supernatural revealing. The poet is sure that the second coming is about to take place. Please note that the poem moves from the general to the particular. The poem speaks of revelation. Surely some revelation is at hand. And then narrows down to the second coming. From the general to the particular. From the universal to the specific. That is the movement here. So what is going to take place? The second coming. As has already been pointed out, the poet uses the definite article the. The poet capitalizes the initial letters of the two words second and coming. Some revelation is about to take place. The poet becomes more specific. It is not some revelation. It is the second coming. The reader is sure that 
The second coming is that of Christ. Whose second coming is foretold in the Bible, in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke and Revelation. The poet deliberately creates this impression. When the reader looks for Jesus Christ, He finds the poet saying that he sees an image, a vast image. The poet does not say that he sees the image. Instead, the poet says that the image troubles his sight. The reader is thus let down. If the image is that of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and God the Son, the Savior of mankind, the image can certainly not trouble the sight of the speaker. This second coming is something dramatically different. Where does this vast image come from? It comes from the spirit as Mundi, the spirit of the world, the world spirit. This concept can be profitably brought into conjunction with the concept of the collective unconscious developed by the Swiss psychologist, psychiatrist, psychoanalyst. Carl Jung. The spirit is Mundi, the spirit to the world, is the collective unconscious of humanity. It is not a concept which is easy to explain. I shall try to put it across to you in this manner. You have a mind. Your mind has an unconscious part. The mind of every individual has its unconscious part. If we put together the unconscious parts of all the minds of all the individuals in this world, we can say that that is the Spiritus Mundi. I know that this is a very unsophisticated method to explain the concept of Spiritus Mundi. And I know that I am not wholly right when I give such an explanation. But very crudely, very fundamentally, very basically, this is what Spiritus Mundi is. The Spiritus Mundi is the collective unconscious of humanity. The vast storehouse of perspectives, values, concepts that are common to the entire human race and that can be drawn upon by individuals. Spiritus Mundi is a universal treasury of unconscious symbols, ideas, 
images that are shared by all the members of the human race. It is from the Spiritus Mundi that the image emerges. It's a vast image. It troubles the sight of the speaker. Somewhere in sands of the desert. The desert has a special place in the Holy Bible. Matthew, Mark and Luke tell us that after he was baptized by John the Baptist, the Spirit led Jesus into the desert. And in the Judean desert, Satan tempted Jesus for 40 days. Jesus, of course, survived the temptation of Satan and proved himself to be Jesus. It is against the background of the desert. The very place where Jesus was tempted by Satan and the very place where Jesus proved himself to be Jesus. That the speaker sees the image. One wonders whether the poet is deliberately raising the expectation of the reader that after all is said and done, the second coming could be that of Christ himself by bringing in the desert which has a special place in the Bible in this context. But of course, if the poet is raising the expectation of the reader a second time, it is only to dash it to the ground. The second coming may take place. But the second coming will be not of Jesus Christ, but of something spectacularly different from Christ and opposed to everything that Christ stood for.